Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Chris Ramsey, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Rob Beckett. We start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Rob, which category would you like? Uh, politics. OK, the category is politics, and the answer is 9%. What's the question? Um, is it percentage of British people without sunburn? <laughs> yes. In this room, I think. Uh, is yes. it the percentage of British men who bought for their wife 50 shades of grey, then tied them to the bed and pissed off down the pub? Yeah. <laughs> is it rounding it up? What percent of Jesus' disciples turned out to be a bit of a wrong un? <laughs> so what percentage of people at a Michael Bublé concert aren't using tenor lady? <laughs> <laughs> um, is, it, um, is it what percentage of EDL members can spell EDL? <laughs> <laughs> is it is at what point would I normally start running around the room going, Have you got a charger? Have you got a charger? <laughs> Is it uh, for how much of history has Bruce Forsyth been alive? <laughs> <laughs> as, as a relatively successful stand-up comedian, how much tax should I be paying? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it the percentage of Talisa's phone book she didn't have to delete in custody? <laughs> <laughs> is it, is what it... are Edward Snowden's chances of making 40? Are <laughs> you sure you weren't initiating no, the murder I wasn't, of no. Edward Snowden? Unless this is a sleeper cell that I really hadn't known about. <laughs> You've you been operating since you definitely offered me 100 quid backstage to kill Edward Snowden. Yeah. It yeah. definitely yeah. happened. To I be mean, honest, you're a Geordie, you'll do anything for 100 quid. Yeah. <laughs> what proportion of the UK electorate think UKIP is in fact a sleeping tablet? <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. I need, you to, want to, I need you want to, to... I need to... I know I say these words a lot. Okay. Real answer is... I need is to it what words gradient of hill... <laughs> 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 so makes Chris Froome go, that's a piece of piss. <laughs> how, how many oh, Glastonbury oh Festival goers <laughs> are still chilling out in front of the pyramid stage? <laughs> is it how much of the show will be over by the time you get the correct answer to this? <laughs> What, is it, is it what, what percentage of this panel will still be alive when Dave show the final repeat of this episode? <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. I would like to... OK. Sorry, genuinely, okay. Genuinely, 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 yes. what percentage of people actually can't believe it's not butter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it genuinely... <laughs> <laughs> Percentage of Dale Winton's skin has not been replaced by World of Leather? <laughs> please, please, can we just have a proper answer for once on the show? Is this the MP's pay rise? Is this how much our MP's pay due to go up by? Absolutely right, thank you very much. Ed Bird! <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was, by how much should MP salaries rise according to the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority, as IPSA? This is the news that IPSA review body has proposed a rise in MPs' pay to around £74,000 a year, an increase of 9% on their current salary of around £66,000. Should they get the pay rise? No. Well, why? Well, because it's easy for me to score points with the audience by saying no. OK. <laughs> Eight grand's hardly enough to put a secret love child through private school. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's not like football, is it? In football, you have to stop your, like, other countries nicking your best players. It's not like other governments are trying to nick our politicians, is it? <laughs> <laughs> like Cameron's going to be yeah. out like, I've said no to Spain, they can't have Gove. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to buy him. I feel quite sorry for MPs, because people all think that all MPs are money-grabbing bastards. But they're not all money-grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Miliband, Ed Miliband has said that he, he's going to stop any Labour MPs having a second job by the next election. But, of course, by then, a lot of them won't have a first job, will they? <laughs> they get 15 quid a day food allowance for lunch. It, uh, yes, it, they do. And they that's, them... that's, that's like free Subway sandwiches. That's free footlongs. That's 36 <laughs> inch of sandwich. <laughs> that is too much for anyone. You can wear it as a belt. <laughs> Ah, uh, George Osborne looks like he could take 36 inches. 
I don't think the voucher is <laughs> exclusively for Subway. Oh, that's what I've been told. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's just I like, the, oh, this the... is only redeemable <laughs> at the Parliament Subway. Uh, <laughs> and, the, and the queue is really long. So this is one Subway guy making the <laughs> <this summer. laughs> it's the It's the travel stuff, right? They're being restricted on taxis. They're not going to be allowed to use taxis anymore. Not going to be allowed to use taxis. Where are Tory MPs going to get their ideas if they're not allowed to take taxis? <laughs> David Cameron is so basically like a taxi driver. I'm surprised he doesn't stand with his back to the dispatch box going, I'll tell you the country's problem, it's <laughs> immigration. That's the problem with his country. <laughs> Uh, they never have proper second jobs, do they? It's always like a posh sort of business role. It's never just like... Because like, I had a second... I used to work in a market and in a pub. Do you know what I mean? Like, my dad used to be a carpet fitter and on the dole. Do you know what I mean? They've always got posh... <laughs> 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 Uh, what health U-turn has the government made this week? It's on um, cigarette packaging. They were yes. planning to say that cigarettes were going to have to come in plain white packets. In, in Canada, and uh, they have the, the, the photographs on the packet as well, but they also have, in, 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 in the French provinces, in, like in Quebec, they've got it in both English and in French, the health warnings. And I had a, bought a packet of cigarettes, and on one side it said, cigarettes cause cancer, and on the other side it said... Le cigarette cause le cancer. <laughs> yeah. Was that really entirely necessary? Is it, if it wasn't for that le, and then like the French people, there is no le, they could not be talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> I will smoke with impunity. <laughs> if, if you want to put people off smoking, just make one cigarette in every packet explosive. <laughs> Or, or genetically modify cigarettes so that whereas, as you smoke them, they go, Help, I'm shrinking! I'm shrinking! <laughs> it's, not, it's not the government's drink aware campaign, though, is it? Who doesn't actually drink aware? Who, who has four pints of Stella, starts dribbling, punching themselves in the face, <laughs> going, This has come as a complete shock to me? <laughs> uh, Arne Heldman, what is Michael Gove being encouraged to do? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going out. <laughs> Chris, Chris, oh, Chris. Oh, he only asked the question, <laughs> it's his job. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, on health matters, what has Michael Gove been encouraged to do? Piss, Piss off! off. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> 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 Ask again! Ask again! Oh, <laughs> Asking, if you keep asking, we can get the swearing down each time. So yeah. by the end, it's just shove off, you Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it really is the last show in the series. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when are we playing yeah, yeah. Kerplunk? Uh, and the, the difference can between... I ask the question? No. Yeah, You've already asked okay. it three times. Oh. Why don't you answer it yourself? <laughs> You've got the answers. <laughs> well, what is the point of us being here? <laughs> We we'll all gather ourselves for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> this will be great, the DVD, they're saying. Uh, OK. So, what else? In other health news... <laughs> <laughs> what health initiative is coming into schools? It, it, Michael Gove is saying school lunches should be banned. Because Why? Only, Why? apparently only 1% of them meet the nutritional requirements that school dinners are supposed to have. Yes, that is generally the gist of it. That's right, the facts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's, true, no, it's, true, it's true. But it's, it's, it's only 1% of... I mean, what I don't, people... know. I don't like the story anyway. Is it just me? I don't want to think about Michael Gove's lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> I, just oh, I just don't want to think about it. Oh, well, I'm God. sorry, but I oh. presume people put it... And what are people putting into it? Like, they're doing oh, 1% well, of... Well, not the kind of stuff I... I you see, this is, seems to me a very unfair story, because they're saying that packed lunches are very unhealthy compared with school lunches. But they're not... I mean, when I had... I only had ever had packed lunches. I had brown bread sandwiches, <clears> I had two cubes of jelly... <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you like that not that yeah. jelly that wasn't jelly made. that wasn't made because my mum didn't like giving us chocolate or sweets or something. The so dense, she used to the cut dense up jelly. Oh. She used to cut up a jelly, uh, you know, the cube that you make it from, and give me two bits of it. It's it's like, it's like it's like and it was really, really nice. But for the rest of the day after I've had it, I was always slightly worried that it might turn into jelly. <laughs> If you, Just a huge shape. If you drank a glass of water, it would go. Yeah. 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 If you just split apart, there'd be a huge shaped jelly there. Yeah. I think that's the biggest water. jelly baby in the world. Yeah. I also did want to ask you that you also said you had brown bread sandwiches. Do you mean brown like bread. two slices of brown bread with a slice of brown bread? <laughs> <laughs> You have to. <laughs> yeah. How can really pat nice. have only 1% of the nutritional requirement of a school dinner? What are people putting in these packed lunches? Is it like a large sandwich in a sugar cube? <laughs> You're thinking some of the kids must be so stupid they're actually eating the plastic box. <laughs> 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 
thought that parents have more control. No, no, but they do. The problem is parents <laughs> do have control. Every time they try and solve this problem, the parents get in the way. When Jamie Oliver tried it, right, tried to make get rid of turkey twizzlers and put healthy food in schools, so mums at the school gate passing packets of chips through to their children. If you want to solve this problem, it's not a policy thing. Just make the railings thinner so they can't shove yeah. the massive hand. <laughs> Sandra, you're going to have to put your face right up and eat to feed into your individual. <laughs> you know which kids it was? They're going after lunch with shiny lips and two rust lines down the face. <laughs> I have to, you, you're making an excellent point, but you said Turkey Twizzlers. I genuinely thought you said when they tried to get rid of Turkish prisoners. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> well, they, why are Turkish prisoners feeding children? Yeah. Yeah. Because they are well, getting well, their the rest of that I, for The whole thing I was going, well, well one of them is called Sandra. Uh, <laughs> and that really is the clue as to the likelihood that I didn't actually say that. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> yeah. You put it that way, it makes more sense. They're suggesting that teachers should eat with the kids. <gasps> But yes. uh, the oh, thing no, is that, you know, a lot of teachers do currently eat with the kids, although it's usually in the form of a romantic meal, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas, DVD <laughs> owners! OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Chris, Ed and Andy! <laughs> Now we play a round called Graduating from Oxford University. This... <laughs> Game involves Rob Beggarlet and Chris Ramsey. So if you could both please make your way to the performance area. This round is our stand-up challenge. I launch a wheel of news and whoever chooses to stop one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. And the first topic is travel. Who wants to come in at that? Chris? I don't know what's happening. It's all different on the telly. Um, I, uh, I, I take public transport quite a lot uh, doing this job. Um, I don't, I, I'm not a fan. I don't really like being in public, walking around. It's nothing... I, I, I don't get normal things in public when I'm walking along. I don't get normal interactions. I don't get, excuse me, sir, what time is it? Excuse me, where's the train station? I get, like, do you like leaves? <laughs> like... <laughs> I could write a book on it, right? And the thing is, as a northerner, people said to me before I came to London um, to do work and stuff, people said, oh, the tube. Oh, the tube's awful, no-one talks. No-one talks. Good! <laughs> Brilliant! I don't want nutters on public transport telling us what they've had for their breakfast, right? I want to be left alone. You know, you're in the tube. If you've never been in the tube, come to London just to go on the tube. It's an incredible experience. No one, literally, silence. It's amazing. Someone could just burst into flames on the tube, and all you'd get is one man looking up from a Kindle going, prick. <laughs> So you guess, even the person, even the person who was in flames would just be quietly going, excuse me, can I just squeeze past? I'm very sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to cause a fuss, but I'm in zone eight in my Oyster Carl's Mountain. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Good man, Chris. Well done. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Rob. Let's see what you've got. Let's spin the wheel again. And the topic is class. <laughs> stuck with this. You're stuck with this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working class. Uh, if you're not sure, there's a little test you can do to see if you're working class or not. You're normally working class if your television is bigger than your bookcase. That's how it works. <laughs> like, in my mum's house, big 15-inch plasma on the wall, little billy bookcase from Ikea next to it. <laughs> DVDs on it normally. That's how it works. <laughs> um, the thing is that my girlfriend's very middle class. That's a problem. She used to be upper class, but we're together now. <laughs> uh, and... <laughs> Her sister, her sister has got a boyfriend, right, called Rupert. <laughs> Rupert. That's in the name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having a go, it's a decent name, I just never thought I'd meet one. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a pub with him, Rupert, do you want another Malbec? What's happened to me? <laughs> the thing is, though, like, when they go around their house, right, they, they, like, in my house, growing up, Saturday night, you'd have... Dinner on your lap, watching you've been framed, right? Bit of a chappy way to have your dinner. That's what we used to do. You go around their house, you sit in the conservatory, you have wine, talk about politics, right? And I started thinking, I oh, said, hey, you should do it, innit? I said, you should do dinner. Then after about ten minutes, I realised I haven't got an opinion and I'd quite like to see a dog fall in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done to both of you. Points for both of you. Come on back. Well done. Well done. Lovely stuff. Come on. Well done, Chris and Rob there. Now, we play a game called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, 
Jeans, what's going on here? Oh, uh, uh, I see. Is it from the Daily Mail and it's uh, Romanian asylum seekers swim to Britain? <laughs> <laughs> Thousands queue to use Brighton's only jet ski. <laughs> is it scenes from the first ever live Where's Wally? <laughs> is, it, is, is it just bollocks? I thought I was the only one who had this idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that bloke there at the front going, Dave! Dave! <laughs> Dave! <laughs> Dave! I'll be on the red team. Is it a whole town of Brighton take part in fire drill? <laughs> Is it Arabian Railway Station floats into Brighton? <laughs> <laughs> is it so? Um, this is the queue for tickets for my new tour, Roaring Forties. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! no you even got the plug in. Well done. Very good. <laughs> is it entire country embarrassed to have thrown a sickie at once? <laughs> <laughs> is it an extract from Dara Brin's Bunga Bunga Workout DVD? <laughs> We do, we do them beaches up and down the country. It's quite beautiful. It's amazing to watch. Still don't know what it is. Still don't know what it is. Still don't know what it is. Is it shock as UK newspapers use same photo five years in a row to let illiterate people know it was hot yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> is it from the wildlife documentary When Sharks Can't Be Asked? <laughs> <laughs> is the beach just busy because it's nice and hot? Yeah, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> bored or not, you just cut through it. Uh, sometimes it's like that. Yes, Brighton Beach, of course. It's one of the many resorts heaving with sun seekers in the recent hot weather. Temperatures in parts of the country have trumped those in the Mediterranean, with people taking advantage of one of the longest heat waves in years, seeing temperatures rise to 30 degrees and above. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. amazing, isn't it? How is it caused chaos? How is well, it caused transport chaos? I was, at, I was at Waterloo yesterday trying to get home, and it was <laughs> boiling, it was baking hot. And the um, guard said, all the trains are delayed because the tracks, the tracks are warped. And I said, well, why is that a problem? He said, because South East Trains has become South West Trains. The <laughs> <laughs> M25 melted as well. It did melt. So yes. It's like our whole transport system has been designed by Dali, essentially. <laughs> I I don't only it I don't know. <laughs> The problem with the N25 melts. All you do is you get a nice big knife, you spread it out, you've got another lane. <laughs> I just fill all the, <laughs> fill all the gritters with sun cream. I'll sort it out, it? <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be all right. Oh, factor 50 will be all right. Yeah. But it, did say, it did say that, that uh, road menders, you know, uh, were dispatched immediately to repair it. What, how, what did they do? <laughs> 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 it, only, it only melted because it's a soft southern road. That's all that happened. <laughs> The E19, the E19 has pissed itself, it's been drinking for three days, it's sunburnt, it's still, it's still hanging in there. <laughs> Apparently doggy sunscreen, the sales yes. of that are up 500%. What a ridiculous thing that is. No, dogs just like the shade, right? No dog has ever gone, oh, I'm just going to lie here, <laughs> poaching my internal <laughs> organs, I reckon I can take ten more minutes. <laughs> it's very difficult for a dog to hold that reflecting thing under their cheek, like that. Uh, they, uh, use, they use those funnels. Oh, these are funnels? Yes, that's what those are! Funnel. I have yes. always... <laughs> <done it. laughs> you don't need sunscreen for pets, cos pets have fur. And it keeps them yes. warm in the winter and cool in the summer. If you put sunscreen on, it's just basically putting hair gel on them. You know, they're yes. trying to keep cool and not go on the pull, aren't they? <laughs> How do you know about hair gel? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, Ed. This is me going out for the night. <laughs> I'm ready to roll. <laughs> well, my favourite thing about when it's hot is when I go and check my gas meter and it's still on 40 quid and it's been on 40 quid for a week. <laughs> to be fair, though, in the winter it's on 40 quid because my uncle sorted it. But... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <It's> all... <laughs> Probably not the thing you want to admit on national television. Yeah. But there. <laughs> There's been a 204% increase in barbecue sales. Right. And a 176% increase in charcoal sales, which means, Dara, that 28% of people forgot to buy charcoal. <laughs> It was also it was nine, nine million sausages sold by Tesco this week. Really? Nine yeah. million, that's four pigs. <laughs> 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 and 
three horses. Yeah. 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 Many horses oh. died for that joke. Yeah. It's quite angry, though, in the summer. Everyone gets quite angry. It's more road rage in summer, isn't there? Because it's sort of hot. People will get out and fight. Like, in winter, no-one's going to get out. Do you know what I mean? Like, if someone's really annoyed you and cut you up, you're going to go, come on then, but... Oh, it's minus three. See you in spring. Do you know what I mean? Another... <laughs> Cut, the cutting off, the cutting off, I, I don't, I rarely cut people up. I'm a very excellent driver. But I yeah. hate it if I'm in a taxi and the taxi cuts somebody up because the person who gets cut mm. up always looks at you, the passenger, like you're the one at fault, like you ordered the taxi driver. <laughs> Get me to where I want to go now. There's an extra tenner in it if you just <laughs> step on every toes, right? So anytime I'm in a taxi and the taxi driver cuts somebody up, right, I always make sure I'm rammed up against the window doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Why might we be hearing more of this sound? Because it's the summer. Yeah. <laughs> no, but longer they've been, of that They've been well. allowed to play their chimes longer. Yes, they have. They? The yes, they have. Men, that's yeah. what, that's there was a law that passed, a chime law passed. I mean, there are various small laws passed this week, like gay marriage, for example. But no, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're talking about the chime laws, uh, where ice cream men are allowed to play for 12 seconds rather than for yeah. four is seconds. It, is it because yeah. of childhood obesity that they need to, more time to get to the ice cream? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is a real problem with ice cream vans. This, I'm not sure this is funny, but it's kind of interesting. OK. Which is that it's all based on a national consultation they had about the future of ice cream vans. And do you know how many responses they got to the national consultation? 99. Tell me it's 99. <laughs> 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 OK, at, this, at, the, at the moment that we're recording now, the, uh, what is the nation gearing up to? What is... Pancake tea! No, <laughs> no. That's it it's a royal baby. Yes, it is, yeah. David Beckham was asked, wasn't he, as to what he thought the kid should be called, and he said he thought it should be called David, uh, but only if it was a boy. <laughs> And you're freaking... You're freaking, when has David Beckham got so sensible about names? <laughs> Harklin Harper Cruise. You, can, you can't tell whether it's male or female or a boat trip round New York. It has to be something that goes with princess or eventually queen. So, uh, well, Latifah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or of the South. Those are... No, do you want a better name? With, yeah. Greatest Hits. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> what name they give the baby should depend on what they take as a surname. So if yeah. they're going to go with Windsor, if it's a girl, Barbara, uh, <laughs> if it's a boy, Legoland. <laughs> yeah. and if they're going with Cambridge, either way, Travel Lodge. <laughs> Tony's the state of Britain today, though, that Prince Charles is going to become a grandfather before he's even got his first job. I mean, that's a tragedy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That is a tragedy. Yeah, and he lives in an estate. You're never going to be out of here. <laughs> how you, I don't know how you discipline a raw baby, though. What can you do to raw kids to go like, right, you've been naughty, you're grounded. When well, Buckingham Palace, quality. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only bit that I'm really looking forward to is the bit where they finally announce the baby when Prince William comes out onto the balcony going, hey, hello, Henry! <laughs> With children. <laughs> Just two bunch of giraffes <laughs> on the <laughs> Oh, at the end of that round, the points go to Chris, Ed and Andy! <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panels can come up with. Oh. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Questions omitted from this year's exams. Using pi... Distract the fat kid next to you so as you can copy his answers. <laughs> Using only the English language, write something. <laughs> <laughs> History. Henry the Fourth, Henry the Fifth, Henry the Seventh. Which was the greatest Hoover the caretaker ever had? <laughs> Maths. Robert has 400 stamps. He likes to put them in 12 different albums. He wants to have them equally in each album. How many friends does Robert have? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the way to San Jose? <laughs> <laughs> Religion.
religious studies. If two men have been married for ten years, for how long will they burn in hell for? <laughs> if the fluid has been flowing at 21 litres a minute for 15 minutes, what on earth is wrong with my bladder? <laughs> Fill your name at the top of the exam paper. If it's Tyler or Charmaine, get up, leave the school and never come back. <laughs> <laughs> Using only the mass of the ass and the angle of the dangle, calculate the measure of the measure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If a man travels 12 miles each day to buy a loaf of bread, how long before he realises that living in the countryside is shit? <laughs> Are multiple choice exams too easy? A. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Optician's final exam. What do you think are the main causes of short sightedness? And now? How about now? <laughs> and now? What about now? And now? <laughs> Media studies, trick question one. <laughs> Name a business like show business. <laughs> <laughs> Geography. What is to blame for climate change? A, the sunlight, B, the moonshine, C, <laughs> the good times, or D, <laughs> the boogies? <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things a weather forecaster would never say. The sun will come out <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Bet your bottom dollar. Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the worst floods since records began, which was last year when all the records were destroyed in that flood. <laughs> uh, don't, this is a map. I'm not a giant. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a bit blowy today. It's my birthday and my wife promised me one. <laughs> Later on, it's going to be raining cats and dogs because a bomb's gone off in Battersea. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was cloudy earlier. I think I may have a urine infection. <laughs> it's well hot, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a frosty start for some of us this morning cos I came in pissed again and accidentally got in bed with my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll be glad to know that scientists have finally explained why we've been enduring this rather long spell of disappointing weather. Apparently, we live in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> And over the next three days, uh, we will see uh, some spells of rain. The entrails never lie. <laughs> <laughs> Things should be getting a lot cooler. Uh, I've just made friends with a black man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid you're going to get wet later on. I'm following you, and I've got a bucket. <laughs> I'm sure the ladies are going to be wearing skimpy bikinis tomorrow. It could reach 90 degrees, which is not bad for a man my age. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be a scorcher, so, guys, you might as well just staple your balls to the inside of your thigh, cos those bad boys are going nowhere. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dave. Yeah. Pretty easy report on things that have already happened. Now, predicting the future. <laughs> <laughs> and now the shipping forecast. Dogger, car park, my penis rising slowly. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the point's going to Chris here and Ryan.
And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Chris Ramsey. <laughs> Commiserations to Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Rob Becker. Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. They're off on a summer break back in September, so next Thursday we mock the week again, more best bits at 10. And Dara's here with another new series next Thursday. Science Club returns to BBC Two. Details coming right up.